<laughs> He's devastatingly handsome, isn't he? Kiss him. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors who actually did it on set. Hold oh, me. For this list, we'll be looking at the most scandalous times actors performed unsimulated romantic acts for a film. Which other actors do you think got it on behind the scenes? Spill your theories in the comments below. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 10. Kerry Fox and Mark Rylance. Intimacy. With a name like that, it's no surprise that the lead characters would get intimate a lot in this two-hour film. As if that wasn't controversial enough, it turns out that very little of it was staged. Was this agreed? No. Allegedly, famed French director Patrice Chéreau pushed heavily for authentic reactions, and that meant a ton of actual friction in the sheets. What, what was I meant to feel? What was I supposed to be like? Who should I have been to keep everyone satisfied, just to come and see a man and bury myself in his arms because I wanted to? Keep in mind, Fox and Rylance were both in long-term relationships at the time. In the years since, Rylance has admitted he was uncomfortable with how far he and Fox went in those scenes. But fortunately, they're immortalized on film either way. Vows, fidelity, support, faithfulness, the whole works. Why should you miss out on all that? You'd have been the first woman who ever had. Number 9. The Whole Cast. Short Bus. This flick opens with some graphic self-pleasure and only gets looter from there. When are you going to let me see what you're working on? Soon. No matter if the characters are alone, with someone else, or in a massive crowd, almost every single scene ends with something R-rated. None of it could be fake either, as that would have ruined the point of the film. After all, the whole pitch behind Short Bus was to convey intimate romance in a more cinematic manner. It's just like the 60s, only with less hope. They definitely committed to the bit, particularly in the last scene. We can't show what happens, but take our word for it, this is not a movie to watch with your parents. I was a little surprised when Jamie mentioned that he wanted to, to do this, and then I thought, you know, we've been together five years, and. I mean, let's face it, monogamy's for straight people. Number eight, Willem Dafoe and Charlotte Gainsbourg's body doubles, Antichrist. Where are you? How dare you leave me? It's clear from the very first scene that the affection in this movie isn't the kind you can fake. Let's just say it gets very up close and personal. Instead, the only question remaining is whether that's actually Willem Dafoe's equipment or not. The answer, a resounding no. I see. No, you don't see. You see a lot of things, but not that. Both he and his co-star were in happy marriages at the time, so they had body doubles come in for the steamier scenes. Even so, what you see on screen is still very much real, just not with the faces you think. Although, to be fair, the mountain of explicit content isn't even the most jarring part of this surrealist horror film. Far from it, in fact. Satan's church. Say. Jesus. Nature is Satan's church. Number seven, Christine DeBell and Juliet Graham, Alice in Wonderland. And now the classic children's story, Mr. Rabbit, is a wonderful new movie. In this R-rated fairy tale, Wonderland is reimagined as a vessel for Alice to explore her sexuality. In fact, the film was originally conceived as a hardcore feature, going as far as casting several prolific adult film stars. While those elements were slightly toned down for the wide release, there's still plenty of unfiltered love scenes, especially with Alice herself, Christine DeBell. Yeah, I feel so good I'm growing up. Supercalifragilisticsx makes me smile. At the very least, Queen of Hearts actress Julia Graham has confirmed that their racy moment was 100% real. If that's the case, we wouldn't be surprised if DeBell's other work in the film was authentic too. Given all that, it's no wonder this movie struggled to find distribution. If I haven't got dreams, I ain't got nothing. Cause dreaming keeps me scheming through the day. Number six, Bill Paxton, Taking Tiger Mountain. To set the stage, this micro-budget sci-fi was filmed in black and white, without sound, and primarily using townspeople from neighboring areas. With all that in mind, it's not too shocking to hear that they didn't splurge on body doubles either. That's how we ended up with a movie where you see young Bill Paxton receiving a very frank kind of pleasure. It's been a while since I've made love. But I feel so nervous. It's not you. I don't know why I feel this way, but I do. As he claims himself, they simply met some girls and asked him if they'd be on camera without clothes. They said yes, and the rest is history. 
Later in 2016, the film was restored and re-released as Taking Tiger Mountain Revisited. Now you can enjoy Bill Paxton's method acting in all its 4K glory. You mustn't go. They'll hurt you too, you know. Billy, where is there to go? Number 5. Kieran O'Brien and Margot Stilly, Nine Songs. On the first day of filming, these two leads had a scene where they met up and kissed. It wasn't until after lunch that the real graphic stuff began. There's no sugarcoating it. We're talking about the kind of content that required them to use condoms. I think we'll ever make love without using a condom. No. Putting aside the film's highly controversial material, you gotta respect how game O'Brien and Stilly were. Even in a runtime of just 70 minutes, they really let the camera show all of it. And we do literally mean all of it. To the point Nine Songs was initially rated X in Australia. Sometimes you have to have faith in people. Say what you want about this love story, but you can't say it lacks passion, that's for sure. I can't take you anywhere! Number 4. Chloe Savini and Vincent Gallo, The Brown Bunny. Hi, bud. I got your note. I have to use the bathroom. Vincent Gallo wore a lot of hats for the making of this movie. He was the director, the writer, the producer, and the lead actor. Infamously, he was also the recipient of some one-sided lovemaking from his co-star, Chloe Savini. I wish you liked me again. Like before. And you like me the most. Warranted or not, this incredibly candid moment sucked all of the air out of the movie's marketing campaign. For what it's worth, Savini has defended the film and complimented Gallo's sensitive approach to the subject matter. However, she also described it as the toughest thing she's ever done. Despite all the dust it originally kicked up, the brown bunny has since been reevaluated as a damning critique of sexual exploitation. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. Number 3. Robert Pattinson, Little Ashes. If one thing's for certain, it's that no one can accuse Robert Pattinson of phoning in a performance. Case in point, his work in the 2008 flick Little Ashes. If I'm going to be anything more than than average, if anyone is going to remember me, then I need to go further in everything, in art, in life. When he signed on to play Salvador Dali, the script required him to get very, very cozy with his own body. But Pattinson wasn't content just acting it out. When I go back, they won't know what's hit them. The idea is, I've got it. It's coming. I can, I can taste it. What's coming? He further explained that faking something like that just doesn't work. So for the sake of cinema, Pattinson let the camera capture him as he really went for it. Unfortunately, his committed work didn't save Little Ashes from getting torched by critics. Guess that kind of stuff doesn't always sell. Why can't you just be happy for me? Number two, Melvin Van Peebles, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. You too proud to be? I hope that you wouldn't take them off if I did. <laughs> you know every goddamn thing, don't you? Well, first things first. It's not hyperbole to say this movie would not have been made without all of its erotic set pieces. See, director Melvin Van Peebles didn't have the time or budget for counterfeit love scenes. Instead, he personally stepped up to the plate for all of Sweetback's uncensored acts, and there's a lot of them. There's so many that Van Peebles ended up contracting a sexually transmitted disease. However, he turned that tragedy into cold hard cash by successfully filing for an injury on the job. The funds he received through workers' compensation helped Van Peebles finish the movie on time. Talk about finding success in unexpected places. No wonder he was going the wrong way. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sienna Miller and Hayden Christensen, Factory Girl. This is Edie Sedgwick. If the rumors are to be believed, these lovebirds had a lot of fun on the set of this biopic. That's plain to see in how convincing their romantic scenes are. Some might say, too convincing. You say you want to make a movie with me, let's make a movie. What? Factory Girl hadn't even hit theaters yet when early reports claimed that Miller and Christensen weren't always acting during intimate moments. Lady, you don't know shit about shit. The official release only fueled the fire, with many fans finding their storyline oddly passionate. Miller's publicist said it was just really good acting, but an insider reported that everyone's assumptions were right. Christensen and Miller had really done it on camera. It seems that all is fair in love and movies. I'll see you around. Superstar. Did you enjoy this video? 
Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.